Okay guys, here we are. It's a bit of fun. Um, here's my gorgeous Raspberry Pi. And a little cobbled together I2C uh, system. And what we've got here is a little uh, 2x16 LCD. And um, a little uh, radio breakout board that you can get from SparkFun. Or in the UK you can get it from Hobbytronics, I think. Or um, Protopic. .co.uk and this is a GPIO expander that I also got from Protopic. This is a uh, rotary encoder that goes to the GPIO and uh, I've been working on some uh, some Python script to get all this stuff to hang together with the idea that you'll be able to control the radio with the uh, rotary encoder which has a push button action on it as well. It's kind of good fun. It's quite a, a therapeutic feeling twiddling this gorgeous little knob. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Um, it, this is a little bit of a, a, a mess. Uh, as you can see, I've got a little um, GPIO uh, header breakout coming over onto this uh, little bit of um, perf board. The kind that has the uh, three consecutive copper tracks which makes bridging components a little bit easier I find you don't have so many uh, sticky outy bits of soldered component lead um, I've soldered some pins onto the GPIO expander um, so I can just use I'm only using three of the four cables here um, the GPIO board uh, expander board sorry is uh, this one Let's see if we can get a bit of focus on this it's uh, it's based on the PCF8575 I2C uh, chip, um, which was a little problematic to start off with. Um, basically, I, I couldn't find uh, couldn't find the wiring diagrams that I needed. Really, um, a little bit unexpectedly, what with me not having worked with these things before, um, you actually connect um, a common ground. So you have, actually have current coming out of the GPIO expander. Um, the rotary encoder is a two-bit affair. Uh, the center of the three tags there is common. Um, left is bit one and uh, to the right is bit two. So you have a two-bit pattern uh, which tells you um, which position, um, which of four positions uh, the... Um, is that right? Is that four? Yes, it is four. Um, the the encoder is currently in. You can also get four bit ones, which will give you um, sixteen uh, positions. Um, it's not as bad as it sounds, actually, only having four positions, because all you're interested in is adding one or taking one, um, provided your code runs quickly enough to catch all the movements of the of the shaft. You should be okay. Um, I'll show you my. Python code. I'll uh, post it on um, in the post. No, not in the post. As in, put it in an envelope. That would be ridiculous. Um, but alongside the video, I'll, I'll post the Python code. Be warned. I am no Python programmer. I normally work in uh, C Sharp .net, doing websites and uh, content management systems, all kinds of weird stuff. Um, so one of the problems I, I was thinking about was. You know, you, you haven't got a massive display area and you really want to minimise the number of uh, components that you're using for control. Um, and a, a, a good way of thinking about it is when you're, when you're using a, a mouse with a, a piece of media software, there's only a few things you're really interested in. And that's selecting what it is you're playing, what volume it is, and whether you want to start or stop. Um, skip forward and back stuff doesn't really apply for a radio um, but I am um, hopefully at some point in the future going to be in including a um, um, music playing um, streaming kind of affair so you can connect to Samba shares or um, other resources or a USB pen drive uh, I need to think about that a bit more carefully um, we'll see what happens with that um, but yeah, I'm just going to run the Python script so you can see um, what is what. And this is the initial um, screen. The radio chip is not actually activated at the moment. Um, 
I'm having some I squared C um, struggles with it. But the number on the left here will be the, the tuning frequency, the number on the right is the volume. So if I just turn the rotary encoder, there's some lovely rounding uh, problems that you get occasionally. Um, so I'm going to have to reformat the frequency string. Uh, but you can see it's moving quite nicely. Um, it's kind of difficult to turn the button because I haven't got it clamped down to anything. There you go, tuning away, tuning away. Um, and then if you uh, click the encoder, like that, then we go into a menu and you can select what it is you're going to control with the um, with the rotary encoder. So you can do tuning, which is the default mode, or volume. You can select what band, and you can exit the application altogether. Um, now, if I go to volume and click on the uh, encoder again, then I end up back at this main screen, but now rather than controlling the, um, the tuning, I'm now controlling the volume. Now we'll go back to the menu and the third uh, menu item is select band. Um, this this tiny little beggar here, the, the uh, radio breaker, the focus on this camera is absolutely abysmal. Well, I suppose I'm quite close, mind you. That's not activated at the moment. Um, but it does have um, long wave, medium wave, three or four short wave bands can't remember how many exactly at the moment FM broadcast and it also decodes RDS data which is I'm kind of looking forward to doing that um, piping the, the data onto the screen um, but the band select in the context of the flexibility of the, the breakout board does become kind of important and I'm sort of more interested in getting shortwave stuff going on than I am broadcast FM I've got dozens of devices that I can listen to FM radio on or you can go you know listen to the vast majority of FM stations online now. I'm much more interested in the AM bands, the long wave, medium wave and the, the short wave ones. Um, so I've got a little sub menu here and the encoder now controls whoops sorry about that <laughs> bit of a dry joint in there somewhere um, and it'll even scroll along I've got more items than will comfortably fit on the screen. You get a little text description. Um, I've written uh, my own I squared C drivers for this LCD display, uh, which I got from Farnells here in the UK. Uh, I've got another test one up here somewhere, which I kind of trashed. Um, they're, they're, they're nice little units. Um, uh, if you can read that, it's a uh, it's a Midas uh, unit. They're not massively expensive. Um, I think I paid about seven, eight pounds for this thing. Um, and Farnell, being the excellent supplier they are, delivered it next day, which was great. Um, I've also picked up in the in passing um, some smaller ones uh, made by the same company, made by Midas. Um, same character capacity, um, but I, I'm. I'm kind of like this display the blue uh, the white on blue one and I sort of want to protect it so um, at some point I'm going to um, solder this onto um, a, an empty breakout board which wasn't something I've really thought about until I got the LCD actually delivered because these guys have tiny weeny little uh, little pins there I hope you can pick those up They're tiny little pins um, which are kind of surface mount size which is a nightmare um, but because I also ordered some uh, analog pots and ADCs which weren't on breakout boards I, I bought some of these blanks and you can see they've got surface mount um, size tracks on them and they go to these, these are from Sparkfun uh, through a UK supplier through um, Protopic um, so you you can protect your your um, your chip by mounting it on one of these, and for the for the uh, GPIO expander, for instance, I've um, soldered some pins in, um, which you know sometimes is useful, sometimes is not. Um, 
that was, that was kind of experimental. I just wanted to see how, whether it would make my life easier. It turns out it hasn't actually, because um, they're they're unlikely to move the the um, the little uh, connector there that goes to the rotary encoder is not likely to move because I've hard coded um, in Python to read specific bits from the GPIO. Uh, but for the LCD, this is going to be really handy. And if you're careful, you can kind of slice these guys in two along that way. And um, then it's just a matter of, same as you would for a chip, you just solder the little sucker on there. Just like that. Or actually, it would probably be more sensible to show you around this way. So that, that just sits on there, and the pins match up perfectly. Um, you'll need a little helping hands thing or... or some such uh, method of keeping things steady but that will make your life easier um, I'd recommend picking up a few of the blanks um, this is for uh, SOIC 20 um, which is the size that these uh, the tiny little ADCs which are in there and these guys as well um, which are digital pots uh, which I'm going to use to control the um, the output to um, power amp. Um, so there we go. This is I said I'd, I'd try and post some uh, some pictures and some code and stuff. Um, this this has been quite a lot of work actually, a lot more work than I was hoping it was going to be. Uh, but I have been tired lately in my defence. Uh, the next big thing that I'm going to need to think about is getting that radio working, and then um, thinking about amplification and um, I have some more prototyping board. Uh, this, this is trackless. This one is kind of beat up, so I'm going to probably have to get some more next weekend. Uh, but I'm hoping I'm going to be able to mount all of the all of the subsystems on this. Uh, there's going to be another rotary encoder. There's going to be some uh, bar graph LEDs. These fun little guys from Farnell, three color red, red, uh, red, yellow, and green. Um, easily driven by these uh, GPIO expanders um, and I kind of like having a uh, that obviously you don't want your GPIO expandable to blow up but I'd rather that one blew up than that one so I, I sort of like having that little dude um, sitting on the I squared C bus you know, gives me a little bit more confidence um, so the, the basic idea is to get these things together and, and turn it into a really nice um, desktop radio um, I really like the, the way that you can the, the Raspberry Pi is so flexible you can think of it as a, a little media machine or you can think of it as a little hack space machine uh, the center of a hardware platform like this but why why only think about it in in those terms one thing at a time I mean this is just this little thing's just Python script. You know, all the grunt is going on in these subsystems. All I'm doing is driving the display rig and passing data from one subsystem to another. That's that's not a lot of grunt. You don't need a lot of processor grunt for that. So why not? You know, if you've if you've got a Pi that, that is your dev machine, for instance. Um, I mean, I have two. I have a, I have a dev machine, a hardware experimentation machine, um, and I've got another one on order, one of the five twelve meg uh, models. Um, which is going to be used for what, the reason that I originally bought a Pi, which was to um, control my telescope. Um, but I need to do a lot more work on um, ZFM and um, a dew heater circuit that I'm working on, uh, which hopefully will also be um, not necessarily I2C, but will certainly be GPIO um, oriented using the PWM outputs on the GPIO. So there we go. This is. Uh, I hope you you uh, find this a stimulating idea. Um, I love rotary encoders. People should use many, many, many more rotary encoders. Um, and a lot of the LCD projects that I've seen have been kind of fun, but kind of useless. You know, it's it's one thing to say, "Oh yes, I'd like I'd like to see one do that." Um, you know, it's like using the light synth on your on your. Um, on your Xbox, it's great. It looks great, but it's, you know, <laughs> there's other things you could be doing, you know. Um, so yes, there we are. That's that's my my little Frankenstein's radio um, as it stands at the moment. Um, I'm going to have a break. 
to post this video and watch Match of the Day. And then I'm going to come back down and listen to some more. It's lovely music. I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but listen to some more of that. And uh, hopefully get the radio working tonight because I've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. Thank you for watching and uh, catch up soon.